Hello everybody. So in today's video, let us discuss about electric field intensity due to charged cylinder. Here two cases we are discussing. One is when point lies inside the cylinder, other is when point lies outside the cylinder. So first let us go for when point lies inside the cylinder. Right? For this, first let us consider a cylinder of infinite length. Right? A cylinder of infinite length. Now this is the axis of cylinder. So the radius of cylinder is capital R. Now, the volume density rho is the total charge per unit volume of the cylinder. Right? So now rho is the volume density on the cylinder. The charge is uniformly distributed throughout the cylinder. Right? Now, here our condition is point lies inside the cylinder okay so inside the cylinder somewhere here i'm taking a point p now this point p is at a distance r from the axis of cylinder now here due to this the charge on this entire cylinder we have to find electric field intensity at the point P inside the cylinder. Right? Now we have to find the electric field intensity due to the entire charge on this cylinder at the point P which is inside the cylinder. For that what we will do? Assume a Gaussian cylinder. Right? Passing through the point P. The curved surfaces are passing through point P. Right? Now first, how we will write the flux? One, we will consider small elemental areas on curved surfaces and circular surfaces. These areas are denoted by vector and S. Now, the direction of electric field is radially outwards, right? The direction of electric field radially outwards and the direction of uh, this vector ds will be along outward normal drawn from the surface, right? Outward normal drawn from the surface the direction of a ds clear so now how we will write the flux the total flux we write as one is due to these circular surfaces the left end right e ds plus due to right end circular end e ds plus due to curved surfaces E ds. Now next what we will write? E dot ds means E ds cos theta left end. Now right end E ds cos theta plus curved surfaces E ds cos theta. Now here you see the left end, right end. What is the angle? 90 degrees. Here also angle 90 degrees. And so what we will substitute? Left end EDS cos 90. Right end EDS cos 90. I will curve the surfaces. What will be the angle? So here DS and E both are in same direction. So angle will be? 0 degrees. And what is the value of cos 90? 
zero and the volume value of cos zero one so these two are zeros so now the total flux will be only due to the curved surfaces that is integral ebs so now let us write the total flux through entire gaussian cylinder is pi is equal to integral e dot ds right clear so in such a way we will write the flux we will consider the curved surfaces and flat surfaces that is the left and right end circular or flat surfaces of the cylinder and we will write but in case of these circular surfaces theta equal to 90 so flux is zero but in case of curved surfaces ds and e are in same direction so theta is equal to zero degrees so the electric flux is only due to the curved surfaces and we wrote here pi is equal to integral ds right so now here according to the charge symmetry charge distribution symmetry as charge is distributed uniformly throughout the sphere the electric field remains the same right so what we will write e integral ds e is the same so we will not integrate the constants so only i wrote outside so integral ds now what is integral ds Integral ds is nothing but the surface area of Gaussian cylinder, right? Then what will be the surface area? If we assume the length as L for Gaussian cylinder, the length as L and R as the radius, right? R as the radius of the cylinder from its axis. Then the surface area will be 2 pi RL, right? Surface area will be 2 pi RL. So now substituting here we get pi is equal to E 2 pi RL, right? Clear? Now next, Gauss law. Now what the Gauss law is saying? pi is equal to q by epsilon naught, right? So now let us substitute here e 2 pi rl is equal to q by epsilon naught, right? e 2 pi rl is equal to q by epsilon naught, clear? So now let us find out the value of the charge q. Now here I said volume density rho equal to Q by volume, right? So Q becomes volume density into volume, right? Now let us write now E 2 pi RL is equal to 1 by epsilon naught. What is the charge? The volume of Gaussian cylinder into the volume density rho, right? So now E 2 pi RL is equal to volume of Gaussian cylinder pi R square L volume. This is surface area. This is volume of the cylinder into rho clear. Now next E is equal to 1 by 2 pi RL into, sorry, by epsilon naught, pi R square L rho by epsilon naught. Now, what cancels? Pi pi 1 R L L. So, what remain? 1 R remain here, rho and here 2 epsilon naught, right? Electric field intensity in terms of volume density. Right now, let us find it electric field intensity in terms of charge density. Right 
Now charge density lambda. What is charge density? Charge per unit volume. Right? Charge per unit volume. Sorry, unit length. Sorry. Charge per unit length. So Q is equal to lambda into L. Right? Q is equal to lambda into L. How now? Here we got E equal to R rho by 2 epsilon naught. Right? So now, what we will write? R by 2 epsilon naught into what is rho? Charge by volume. I am writing charge of cylinder by volume of cylinder. Right? Charge of cylinder by volume of cylinder. So now, R by 2 epsilon naught, what is charge on cylinder? Q. I know what will be the volume of cylinder? Phi R square L. So now, here, now next step, R by 2 epsilon naught, what is Q? Now, R is the radius of this original cylinder, right? Now, Q, we will write lambda L by pi R square L. L L strikes off. So, what we will get? Lambda R by 2 pi epsilon naught R square, right? So, this is the required Equation E equal to lambda r by 2 pi epsilon naught r square. Right? So now why here I took small l is here we are considering this volume density in case of this original cylinder, not Gaussian cylinder. R is the radius as usual I sub substituted. But why I took small l is here this cylinder is of infinite length. We cannot estimate the length. So, whatever the Gaussian cylinder we took. So, we are considering the charges limited up to that particular Gaussian cylinder only. So, I took it the length of this cylinder also as a L. So, now the equation comes out to be E equal to lambda R by 2 pi epsilon naught R square. Okay. Now, next step. Now pause the video and if you want you can write down the notes. Now next one. Point lies. Sorry. Outside the sphere. Right. I consider a cylinder, uniformly charged cylinder of infinite length. Okay. So now here, R is the radius of this. Now I am considering the point P outside the cylinder. It is at a distance R smaller from the axis of cylinder. Now I am assuming a Gaussian cylinder in such a way that its curved edge is passing through the point P. Let L be the length of this cylinder. So first, now before really I said how we will write the electric flux. So electric flux is only due to the curved surfaces. So the total electric flux and the electric flux due to entire Gaussian cylinder. So pi is equal to integral radius. So E integral radius. And what is integral radius? Surface area of the cylinder. That is 2 pi RL. Now next, what is pi as per Gauss law? Q by epsilon naught. Right now substituting 2 pi RL. 
is equal to q by epsilon naught. Now here q, q, the charge of with the charge of cylinder of actual length L into charge density because sorry volume density. So volume density what we wrote charge by volume. So charge is equal to volume into charge in volume density. Okay, right? No group. So this is equal to 1 by epsilon naught. The actual length of the original cylinder. So this is nothing but the volume of original cylinder with the length L. Now before only I said so as it is of infinite length, I'm taking the length equal to this small L already. Because we are considering the charges limited up to this Gaussian region only. Okay. So now the volume of this original cylinder with the radius capital R and the length L is pi R square L into R rho. Now this is E to pi R L. Right. So E is equal to 1 pi 2 pi R L into pi R square L rho by epsilon naught. Now pi, pi cancels, L, L cancels. So now here what remain? E is equal to here R square, rho remained, here 2 epsilon naught, small r remained. Right? Now next, in terms of electric field intensity in terms of linear charge density. Or charge density. What is charge density? Q by L. So Q is equal to lambda into L. Right? So now uh, let us assume here E what we got R square rho by 2 epsilon naught R here we got. So R square by 2 epsilon naught R. Now what will be the rho? Q by V. So Q by what will be the V? Pi R square L. So this is equal to R square. R square types of. Now instead of Q, I can write lambda L from this formula by 2 epsilon naught R pi L. Again L L cancels. So electric field intensity is lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r. So this is electric field intensity when point lies outside the sorry cylinder. Outside the cylinder. 